Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another edition of Prophecy in the News. Today's guests, L.A. Marzulli and Richard Shaw, they have produced a brand new video. We'll be talking about it on today's program. Well, L.A. Marzulli, welcome once again to Prophecy Great in to the News. Great to be here, Gary. Thanks for having us. And it's always good to talk to you. And uh, you have brought your videographer with you today, Richard <laughs> Shaw. <laughs> Our director. <laughs> uh, your director and video videographer, uh, the gentleman who actually shot... Uh, the contents of this DVD, which is called Watchers 5. Richard Shaw, good to have you here. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Gary. We've got a lot to talk about today and a, very little time to talk. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking uh, right off the bat about your new DVD, Watchers 5. This is f the number five DVD in, in your series, mm -hmm. The Watchers. And L.A., tell us what you're trying to do in these DVDs. What would you like people to see when they watch these? Good question. The bottom line is I believe, Richard and I both believe, that we are in um, the days that are, are leading up to the Great Tribulation. And Jesus tells us the signs. Wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, and troublesome times. And what Watchers does, and there's also a scripture in 2 Thessalonians that says, Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders. And so we, we take that and we put it into a biblical blender, as it were. And what we come up with as we look around the world today, we see exactly these signs that Jesus and Paul tells us, warns us, will be preceding his second coming happening. And so Watchers isn't afraid to look at what is happening. Some of the phenomena is a little strange, I get that. But these events are happening in real time. And what we try to do is bring that to the public. And many of the things you bring to the public have to do with UFO sightings. They have to do with uh, phenomena that are considered somewhat esoteric, mm -hmm. maybe a little dark, dark mm -hmm. subjects, sure. particularly in Watchers 5. And we'll be talking about the black-eyed children. Mm -hmm. Many would consider this a, a dark subject, and yet it's something that I think needs to be discussed. Uh, before we, uh, we sat down here today, we talked about what we would would be presenting to you, the audience, uh, that we think you need to know. Uh, assuming that you're a Christian, assuming that you watch the world around you, you've probably noticed that things are changing rather rapidly and not for the better. And, and there are some really uh, deep, dark, serious things happening. One of the things that, uh, that you feature on your new DVD is another visit with Dr. Uh, Roger Lear. Sure talking about UFO implants. Now, to most people, uh, most Christians, why talk about UFO implants? What is the, uh, what's the virtue in that? Well, I believe, we believe that, uh, and we have a trail of evidence, a chain of evidence going back to the abductee, whose name is Tim, Dr. Roger Lair, who extracted this implant from Tim, and now we're looking at it um, at SEAL Laboratory, under a scanning electron microscope at 40,000 uh, times magnification. Um, and this is high strangeness. This is very, very bizarre. Richard? It's actual physical evidence. It's not that, oh, I saw this UFO, and you, know, you have blurry pictures of some light in the sky. This is like a man who had an experience, who had an experience with missing time, such as you did mm -hmm. in your experience, mm -hmm. Gary. But then he ended up, uh, they discovered this this implant in him. He had a, an accident on the job. He hit his thumb with a hammer and wanted to have it looked at. And the doctor said, well, did you know you have a piece of metal in your arm too? And he said, no, I don't. And he argued with the doctor. He said, yes, you actually do. So he didn't know what it was, and he left it in there for many years. And upon examination, this turns out not to be just a little chunk of metal, mm -hmm. but, but something much more sophisticated, yes. right? It, it's a highly evolved computer, machine, whatever this thing is, we're really not sure, and, and the people who have examined this aren't really sure what we're looking at. Um, I believe, my personal theory, is that this implant is changing the host's DNA on some level. And of course, if that's true, that has, or could have grave implications. And on that subject, and both of you have covered this subject well over the last few years, this is the story uh, of the 
the very important events in Earth's history that happened right after the fall of man. Mm -hmm. Fallen angels mm -hmm. came, visited humanity, mm -hmm. corrupted the human race. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all talked about this many times that, that the Bible says, Jesus himself said, that as it was in the days of Noah, sure. so would it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man? And so basically that's your thesis, right? Absolutely. When Jesus lays that down, it's, it's almost like a, a flare going off. Why, out of, the entire Tanakh, out of the entire Tanakh, why does he point back to Genesis 6, telling us that it'll be like the days of Noah when he returns? What differentiates the days of Noah? And of course, it's the presence of the B'nai Ha-Nephilim, or Elohim, the Nephilim, this un unholy union of the fallen angels having sex with the women of earth and, and creating this hybrid, which was never supposed to exist, known as the Nephilim. And I believe this is really the key to scripture. And in some ways, it's the key to end time events. And this is why we cover this in Watchers. This is why we aren't afraid to look at implants or talk about the Nephilim or talk about UFOs, because we believe that there is a, con a sort of a demonic, a Luciferian conspiracy that's happening here that's about to be sprung on the earth. Well, you know, Paul says, and you guys can can talk on this freely, uh, but I would just like to set this up. Paul says that uh, you, you should welcome strangers, he says, because you may be entertaining an angel unawares, mm -hmm. saying, in effect, there will be angels popping in into your life, and you may not know who they are. And I really believe that. But there are also demons popping in, and m more particularly in the last, what, uh, 40, 50 years, maybe starting with 1947. That's World War uh, II. With Rock, uh, Roswell, you know, things like that. This has become more and more and more a, a theme. And many people say, well, these uh, little guys are from Alpha Centauri or someplace like that. Is that but, a reticulum? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've got an entirely different opinion. You don't think they're from Alpha Centauri. Rich? Well, there's, there's various theories about it. Uh, we kind of have the idea that, that some of these sightings could be interdimensional. And, and when you say that, people go, oh, come on. You know, but, you know, a, a hundred years ago, people weren't flying around in, in you know, 757s either. That would have seemed like, you know, right. unbelievable stuff going on. So essentially, they just know how to do something that we don't know how to do yet from a technical standpoint. I look at it very scientifically. Oh, okay, they can, they can move between dimensions or they can alter gravity, mm -hmm. or the space-time continuum, which is what I think we saw in the recent Denver sighting mm -hmm. that was on Fox News showing a UFO uh, flying around at so fast you had to slow the, the film down to be able to even see that it was there. So they're, they're becoming more bold, and, and these sightings are popping up all over the world, especially down in Mexico. They're just like everywhere down sure. there. So, so w we have to go, well, what is this? What's going on here? How does this relate to anything in the biblical text or ancient text? It is a global phenomenon, and it's not going away. UFOs are, in fact, real, burgeoning, and not going away. Um, if, if it was only one sighting, we wouldn't be talking about this. It's hundreds, thousands of sightings on a yearly basis, and they, they move about the atmosphere with impunity, and the church needs to wake up and understand that when we read Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders, um, the phenomena that I believe ties back into that scripture is happening right in front of us. And that's, what we, that's why we make Watchers, to discuss this kind of phenomena. What about openly. all that stuff? <laughs> well, you know, in Watchers 5, and, and I have to say... the real X-Files. I have to <laughs> yeah, the real X-Files. I have to say this. Uh, I appear in Watchers 5. Yes, you, you do. You wanted <laughs> me to appear for an interview because I had a UFO encounter back in 1967. And it happened while I was flying and delivering some materials to another airport or two other airports. And it's a fascinating story. And as you know, I believe that I, my life was saved by this encounter. Mm -hmm. I think it was an angel. Mm -hmm. I believe very strongly that angels uh, go on errands designated by God. Sure. Th they, are, I concur. they are messengers, they are servants, and they are, act as saviors on occasion. Mm -hmm. But I think far more to the point these days, demons are beginning to show up in the air because as Satan himself referred to as the prince of the power of the air. He's the ringleader, and, mm -hmm. and the air being the atmospheric heavens is where these UFOs are seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, 
basically what we're driving at. Now this tells us we must be at a particular time in history. I think that when we, we <clears throat> take all this phenomena, including all the earth changes that we see, and again, we, we look at them all, um, I believe that we are leading up to the time of Jacob's trouble. I, I think that we are in unprecedented times in all of history. For instance, Jesus tells us that it was, um, there'll be earthquakes in diverse places. When that statement was uttered almost 2,000 years ago, there's absolutely no way to track earthquakes in diverse places. Mm -hmm. If you lived in Palestine or Israel at the time of, of when he uttered that, how would you ever know about a 9.0 happening in Fukushima? You wouldn't. And yet today, my iPhones constantly pings anything over a 5.0, I know about it instantly. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. amazing. And we have had hundreds of earthquakes in Oklahoma, as I've mm -hmm. said on several occasions. Uh, years ago, five, six years ago, uh, and beyond that, no earthquakes in Oklahoma. Mm, well, in 2012, we had close to 200 small earthquakes between 2.5 and 3.0. And, and are just the past couple of weeks, we've had uh, over 6.0 and, and a 7.7, .7, I think it was, uh, up in up in northern Canada. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like they're they're happening all over the world, especially around the Ring of Fire area. Yeah. Jesus speaks about the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled in Luke uh, 21, 24. And then in verse 25, he says, And there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity in the sea and waves roaring. So you're, you've got tsunamis there. You've got uh, coronal uh, mass ejections. E ejections. Mm -hmm. You've got solar activity. People, Richard, I don't know about you, but when I watch the news, people are really afraid of the sun these days. They're afraid it might explode or something. Right, there's uh, a lot of information coming out of NASA that says that 2013, which we mentioned in Watchers 5, is going to be a banner year for solar activity. They're expecting a lot of coronal mass ejections and more uh, uh, ionic atmospheric changes because mm -hmm. of that, and it could also affect our, our power. It could take it could, down the grid. And possibly our weather as mm -hmm. well, creating severe weather situations. Sure. So there is a, a spirit of fear being spread abroad. Now, the Lord has not put in me a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of faith. And, and I try to remind myself of that right. moment by moment, because the world is moving more toward fear right now. Let's talk about the weather a minute. In Watchers 5, you inter interview a gentleman who talks about something called harp. And maybe a lot of our audience hasn't heard of HARP. It's H-A-A-R-P. Mm -hmm. What is that exactly? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that right over to Richard. That's his bailiwick. <laughs> okay. It, it's it's a, a, a program that, that's based up in, in Alaska. And uh, this man that we have on the show is Dr. Brooks Agnew, who's an expert a scientist and an inventor, and, and worked with uh, Dr. Bernard Eastland, who was the inventor of HARP. And uh, Brooks had been doing experiments using radio waves to try to find oil and natural gas under the ground. And he discovered that at certain frequencies it would resonate. And he mm. could tell, oh, it's, uh, we have oil, it's at this depth, it's this kind of oil, and we have natural gas under that. And they did this one test where they, they put the broadcast unit down on the ground and they flipped the button on and bam, 4.2 earthquake mm. about a second later. So he went back to the lab and said, what frequencies did we use to get that result? And did we do that? Or was it just a coincidence that it happened? And sure enough, he discovered that certain frequencies will cause an earthquake. So he immediately told Bernard Eastland at HARP that if you use these frequencies in a certain way, you can create an earthquake with that. So be really careful. And other things that it will do, mm -hmm. basically HARP can push up the ionosphere so that you end up with kind of like a bowl-shaped area. He mm -hmm. calls it like a parabolic dish where you can use it to aim the beam in various places on the planet. Wow. So that's how you can have a harp up in Alaska and it can affect something somewhere else. So we don't know what all harp is doing, but we know that so, it will also change the weather. As I'm listening to you, I'm thinking super weapon. Sure. If you could create an earthquake <clears throat> under the enemy's terrain. On a 12-volt battery, essentially. <laughs> That's what all he had <clears throat> wow. that thing. Or if you could direct weather somehow. Yeah. Uh, that's a super weapon. Well, Brooks has made this little test thing, and, and he's shown it on History Channel as well as uh, uh, Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura. He brings this, this uh, it's basically a lucite tube that's about five or six feet long, and he fills it with fog, 
and he has a little element at the bottom like like a harp antenna and he uses the same frequency and you can watch <coughs> the fog just go whoop, and just pushes it, it instantly. Can steer. Yeah. Yeah. And he said the basic frequency is like 10 to 15 hertz. So it's low frequency. Low frequency. You know, it's ULF, ultra low frequency. And, you know, to create an earthquake is even, I believe, even lower frequency than that. It's something like 2.5 hertz. I mean, it's like, hardly, it's like thump. <laughs> but it works. Speaking uh, as a pastor, I've taught the book of Job. And I remember Job 38 very well, where God lectures Job. And and God asks Job a series of 60 questions. And he says, Job, were you there when I did such and such? Were you there when I did this? Were you there when I uh, laid the foundations of the earth, et cetera, et cetera? We've all read that passage. But one of the things that God says to Job is, were you there when I laid up a, a treasury of hailstones reserved for my day of judgment? Interesting. Implying that God can control the weather. Mm -hmm. So this is very interesting to me. You have men claiming they can control the weather. God tells Job, I control the weather. I see a little conflict there. Well, there always was a scripture that I never quite understood. It was like, I will destroy those who destroy the earth. And I was thinking, well, we've got nuclear weapons, I suppose, if we blew off enough of those. But to actually destroy the earth, and it seems like we're coming into Mm -hmm. equipment nowadays and, and inventions that is is more powerful than we could have imagined just a bomb going off this is like huge well i come back to what i read just a moment ago there shall be signs of the sun moon stars upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring that really sets the scene for today does it not well it does Let, let's just take a look what's happening in the middle east um and, and what do we see we see wars and rumors of wars we see uh, a perplexity of the nations as they look at the conundrum of the Middle East. And we've been trying to get this two-state solution in the peace process for decades, and it's always the same thing. Basically, it comes down, in my opinion, to Israel's right to the land and right to exist. And I believe that Israel has been regathered uh, back into its ancient home and the fulfillment, partially at least, of Ezekiel 37 and other prophecies. And now we see, you know, ben Benjamin Netanyahu states that um, if the Arabs were to lay down their arms, uh, there'd be peace. If Israel laid down their arms, there'd be no Israel. And it just sums it up very quickly. And of course, as we're, we're, we're talking right now, the Middle East once again, uh, with the Arab Spring, the, the civil war in Syria, the Muslim Brotherhood going up against Jordan, uh, the instability of, in Lebanon with Hezbollah uh, entrenched with, what, 100,000 missiles, what we see in Gaza. And then, of course, with uh, Morsi, the president-elect in Egypt, and the Muslim Brotherhood in there, uh, with Haggazi, the fiery imam, saying that that uh, Jerusalem will be the eternal capital of the newly created Arab state. So we are literally at an impasse. And I'd like to point out something that I found out about years ago, studying the UFO phenomenon relative to the Bible. Mm -hmm. I discovered that UFO waves occur in parallel with uh, key events in the life of Israel. We have great UFO waves in 1947-48, in 1952. 1956, we had the famous wave over Washington, D.C. 1967, Six-Day War, huge global earth, uh, uh, earth wave of UFO activity. 1973, that, which of course was the Yom Kippur War, mm -hmm. another huge wave of UFOs, and we're having one today, right? It, our, we're experiencing maybe the biggest UFO wave in history right now. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite profound, actually, and there's you know, people are actually shooting this and putting it up on YouTube. And of course, there's the fake ones. You know, people are faking it out so they can get hits and make money doing that. But there's also the real ones, too. Uh, there are real, real sightings out there. Now, let's go back to Watchers 5. And again, L.A. and Richard have put this together as a kind of a reminder of where we are uh, uh, in the flow of Christian prophecy. There would be a time, says the Bible, uh, when phenomena, uh, uncommon, strange, rare phenomena would be, become visible once again, uh, as it was in the days of Noah. And you believe you've hit that time. Let's go to, uh, I think, the featured element in Watchers 5, which is the black-eyed children. This is a phenomenon that you guys cover that a lot of people would consider unbelievable. Which one of you wants to, to take this? All right. Um, this, this happened because I, I did, we're doing some research and came upon a book by author David Weverly, 
who had written a book on the Black Eyed Children. And basically, um, and, and it's not, again, it's not just one story. There are multiple accounts of these black eyed kids showing up in all different situations. Um, and usually it, it's something, something appears like this. One of these kids will just sort of knock on the door and appear at, let's say, six o'clock at night. Their heads are down. You don't see, see them at all. They're baseball caps. But you notice that the clothes are hanging on them a little funny. Well, what are you kids doing here? What do you kids want? And you'll hear, just let us in. This won't take long. Now, their heads are still down at this point. And you kind of look around and, you know, where do you, where you kids live? Are you lost? And then they lift up their, their, their heads and we see the person sees black eyes. There are no whites in the eyes at all. The eyes are totally black. And they are overwhelmed overwhelm with the feeling of fear and that whole fight or flight instinct and most in, in, pretty much in every case the door slams the car door slams and people just exit as fast as they can rich well what i thought was interesting uh when you showed me the book that david weatherly had written about it his his research and this wasn't just fictional accounts this was like these were people he interviewed that it all had the same type of account the same type of story and so I, I told uh, 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 a woman that helps us quite a bit on Watchers, uh, her name is Terry Tilton, and she uh, is a, a real Watchers fan. And I said, you know, we're doing this story about the black-eyed children. And she just screamed. I said, what, what? And she said, my friend Leah just had an experience like that. And I thought she was joking, because, I mean, this is really bizarre stuff. And she said, no, she called me all upset because she'd had an experience like that. And she... She lives in Milwaukee, but she's going to be in Los Angeles next week. And I said, well, can we interview her? And I'm kind of sheepish about this. It's like, is this for real? Or is this, you know, mm -hmm, sure. I don't know what we're getting into here, but, you know, we'll interview her. Well, this, this uh, woman arrives, and she's, she did a fantastic job. She looks great on camera, and she tells us her story. And it was like she hadn't read the book. She knew nothing about David Weatherly. She hadn't seen the mm. picture on the book. And her tale was exactly textbook, just like what Detailed. all of the other, yeah. Detailed. Detailed. Now, I have to ask at this point, what's going on here? Uh, it's, when I think of uh, black-eyed children, no whites in their eyes, it makes me think of maybe those little gray guys with the uh, big black eyes, or it makes me think of some demonic activity of some sort. What's going on? In, in my opinion, what we're looking at, and, and Chuck Messer talks about this. We've interviewed Chuck for, for, for The Watchers, and Chuck basically states that Satan is outnumbered two to one. We know that again from scripture where it says that Satan, when he rebelled, took a third of the host of heaven. So those numbers are correct. Satan is outnumbered two to one. We know from other researchers that there seems to be a breeding program going on. So while we can't prove this, we can't vet this totally, we have the, the appearance of black-eyed children. We believe these are hybrid children, that they are not fully human. When I ask Leah, who's, who's interviewed in Watchers 5, what was it like? Now, she has no Nephilim dog in the hunt. She has no end-time eschatological viewpoint. None of that's there in, in her paradigm, in her worldview. She said it was looking at the spawn of Satan, her words. It was looking, when she looked in the eyes, it was like looking down through corridors into a black pool of evil. She, has never, she said on camera that she has never been so terrified in all her life. And she didn't want to look back. Didn't want to look back. Let me suggest that uh, I think that the, the Spirit of the Lord has, has covered America for, for a good enough, since its foundation, yes. really. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that we have been the place on earth that had the blessing of God and the covering protection of the Holy Spirit. And I, I believe that as people are turning away from the Lord, that covering is slowly being removed, and things like you're talking about are popping up, yes, and I are. think Christians need to be warned about it. I, I think there's, there's a couple of positions we can take. We can live with our heads in the sand and pretend all is well, that none of this is happening. And I have friends like this that won't look at the wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, troublesome times, signs in the heavens and earth, the uh, Satan coming with all signs and lying wonders, or that's one position we can take, keep the head in the sand, or we can begin to address what's really happening in real time. That's what Watchers does to arm the Christian and to let us know the days that we're living in and what's really happening in front of us. Well, it's time for me to talk about Watchers 5 and, and offer it to our uh, viewing audience. Watchers 5 is a DVD that is beautifully produced. Richard is, I, I called you a videographer earlier on, and you are. 
he he knows how to shoot. He's got the eye, and he also <laughs> knows how to edit and cut. And what you're going to have here is an experience of of just uh, walking into this world that's opening up before our very eyes right now. You're going to see the things we've been talking about. Meet the people. Uh, the DVD is called Watchers 5. It's the fifth in the series. And by the way, if you call the 800 number on your screen right now and order Watchers 5 for 1995, it'll be accompanied by a free DVD, which is uh, my personal UFO encounter uh, that I related at our Branson conference uh, last summer. So you'll get that as a bonus. These for 1995, if you'd like to, to get an entire set, I have the Watchers 5 series here, uh, which is Watchers 1 through 5, and there will be bonuses with this. Watchers 1 through 5, <laughs> 99.95, and we have these uh, Branson discs, uh, My Personal UFO Encounter, uh, my appearance with Rob Skiba and Doug Hamp at the conference, and my appearance with L.A. Marzulli and Doug Hamp, and we're discussing these topics. So you're going to get all of the uh, five Watchers series. Let me hold this right side up. All the five Watchers series plus the three bonus DVDs. If you call the 800 number on your screen right now, ask for the Watchers series. You'll get the bonus DVDs, all of that for $99.95. That's a tremendous uh, value. Well, let's, let's uh, draw this thing to a, a, a suitable conclusion. <laughs> uh, let me begin with you, Richard. What do you want to leave people with? You've had the experience of putting these things together. What should people know? I think it's just intriguing what's going on in the world and that we're, we're not just uh, making these stories up. These aren't fictionalized stories, but what we're trying to do is look at them as factually and sometimes as scientifically as possible, that we can prove that these are unusual events that are happening today and here are the people behind it and here are the actual stories mm -hmm. that make up those things. And to me, it's very fascinating. I mean, if you like uh, finding out about those kind of events and not being afraid of them, um, I think that that's, you'll, you'll enjoy the show. L.A., what would you add to that? I just think that we're bringing um, real events in real time from a biblical perspective. That's our paradigm. That's our worldview, specifically from a prophetic viewpoint, from a prophetic fulfillment. And I believe that we are in unprecedented, tenuous, tumultuous times. And what Watchers does is it arms the viewer with vital information, but you can bring in people that have no Christian paradigm and they can sit down and watch this and it will get them thinking. So as a witnessing tool, it's fantastic. I would vouch for the quality of the video, the information you're gonna receive, amazing stuff. This is the world we live in today. And by the way, we try to keep you on the cutting edge of what's going on, that's why we're here. Gary Stearman, thanks guys. Thank, Thank you, Gary. Gary. And remember, Jesus is coming soon, so keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported program made possible by our many friends around the world. Be sure you tune in every day for breaking news and our daily prophetic news updates at prophecyinthenews.com or follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash prophecyinthenews.